Hello my soccer universe, let's look back at the midweek full with cup action, there of course was league action in Serie A where I'm linking a video above here. For the Austrian cup action I will refer you to the short videos that I've made but we gotta start with the one big league game that happened in this midweek. In what was surely the match of the midweek, Ajax beat Feyenoord in a very un-Ajax-like manner and taking now the mantle of the leader of the chasing pack. They are now in second place just behind PSV, winning 2-0 and doing so with long balls and dead ball situations. So really, this is not Ajax style, but it worked this time around because after an early chance for Feyenoord, it's a long ball out from pass where it is completely misjudged by the Feyenoord defense. Wellenreuter comes out, Kenneth Taylor just goes past him into the empty net. Sixth minute, Ajax are in the lead and they stay there. They are the more dangerous team. And then Hato does it off after a corner kick. It's still not Ajax after 25 minutes. And they more or less see this out. Yes, there were chances for Feyenoord, even in the first half, still. Then in the second half, of course, they were trying to get the goal in, but the Ajax defense held tight. I guess with Faraoli, it's Italian methods that are going out to Ajax. Blasphemous, I would say. In round two of the German Cup, we actually had quite a few upsets, namely Bundesliga teams being eliminated by second Bundesliga teams. But we also had a lot of discussion about VAR, and this time not about VAR decisions, but the absence of VAR irked quite a few people. So, who are the teams that eliminated Bundesliga teams? We had Bielefeld 2-0 over Union Berlin, we had Köln 3-0 over Holstein Kiel and Hertha BSC, probably the biggest one, beating Heidenheim 2-1 at home. However, the big international headline of course is Dortmund losing another big game, this time in overtime to Wolfsburg away from home. 170th minute, Jonas wins, eliminates Dortmund and Wolfsburg of course move on. In the Bundesliga clash, Frankfurt beat Gladbach 2-1, then we had also Leverkusen 3-0 over Elversberg. Another Bundesliga clash between Leipzig and St. Pauli, a wild one, a 4-2. Stuttgart beating last year's finalist Kaiserslautern only 2-1 at home. Similarly, Freiburg only 2-1 at home against HSV. And also Hoffheim only 2-1 at home against Nürnberg. Bremen away from home 1-0 at Paderborn. And then, of course... Mainz losing at home to Bayern Munich 4-0 with Musiala getting his first hat-trick for Bayern over ahead of the first goal. People didn't like that VAR wasn't there because it might have been chalked off. Bayern anyway, overall the much better team. The midweek also gave us the round of 16 in the world's most unnecessary cup competition, which is of course the English League Cup would all be so, so much more exciting if they would actually be playing full teams, but then fixture congestion, blah, 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 blah. Here are some notable results. We had Brighton losing at home to Liverpool 3-2, pretty big win for Liverpool that one. We had one upset with Crystal Palace getting a 2-1 away win at Aston Villa. Despite Duran scoring, it is Glasner favorite Kamada who gets the winning goal for Crystal Palace. We had under coach Ruud van Nistelrooy, United beating Leicester City 5-2 at home, looking for one score convincing. We didn't see that under Ten Hag as of late. Newcastle beat second string Chelsea quads 2-0 at home. Arsenal had an easy 3-0 away win of Preston North End. And then Spurs beating a second string Manchester City side. But as Manchester City side nonetheless, there was of course no Erling Haaland on the field. Spurs, I think, are throwing everything in that basket. Even Timo Werner was scoring in there. And in the next round, Spurs are taking on the next Manchester team in United. The other fixtures are a little bit more lopsided. I would say Arsenal taking on Crystal Palace. Newcastle play at home against Brentford. And Southampton host Liverpool. However, the big story in England was, of course, that the new United coach seems to be Ruben Amorim. As of now, there are only details to be determined. And he may join United after the next international break. Assuming that this is true, United are getting a very interesting coach. However, can I just say this sucks? This sucks from a sporting point of view. This sucks. Honestly, for me, also from a marine point of view, because United is a train wreck and you're going to put another very talented manager in charge of this absolute rabble. And it sucks even more for Sporting, who finally were about to break the dominance of Benfica 
and Porto. It was probably bound to happen. But losing him in the mid-season when you are really on a great title defense. At the moment, Sporting are still perfect in Portugal. This really, really, really sucks. Of course, that big two in Portugal will be very happy about that one. So yeah, United causing a whole lot of trouble everywhere. And in the end, I fear it might not even work out. And that's galling. I much rather would prefer that Amorim would take over at the beginning of the next season. And meanwhile, stick with Van Nistelrooy. He will avoid relegation for United, I'm pretty sure. In light of the catastrophic flooding that hit the southeast of Spain, especially the region of Valencia, it almost is secondary what happened in the Copa del Rey. However, I decided let's look here at a few results from the top La Liga teams from last season. You see already quite some games being postponed because of this catastrophe. Villarreal actually played before the rains hit and beating Poblense away from home 6-1 with Ayose Perez Wells scoring a hat-trick. Girona beat Extremadura 4-0 away from home. Celta also got a big win of 5-1 over San Pedro. Then we had Betis for once scoring also a ton of goals in a 6-1 win at Gevora. And lastly Atletico Madrid had quite some trouble at Vic. They needed a penalty in the 81st minute by Julian Alvarez and also a yellow red card in the build build up to that one to get on the winning streak and Julian Alvarez then adds another one in the 89th minute. I also want to use this catastrophic flooding in Spain to make a wider point that not only concerns Spain, but I will use this as a jumping off point. We saw that the La Liga schedule has already two games postponed, the one between Villarreal and Rayo, and of course Valencia going to Real Madrid, and this, due to the very full calendar, will only be played probably February, if not even later, depending on how far these teams go in their domestic cup and also in the Champions League, which shows again that our calendars are so chock full that we cannot even plan for these contingencies and given that we had similar situations with flooding on the past weekend in Italy where the Bologna Milan game was controversially postponed I gotta say and also what we had in Austria where there was also major flooding that caused quite a few games to be postponed one where we still don't know exactly when it will be played I really wonder why do we keep cramming up our calendars more catastrophes will come and yes if we don't care about player welfare and obviously we are not I think this is another point. We definitely need to do this because we won't be able to finish our leagues anymore because we need to have open slots for makeup games, maybe even full makeup rounds. Remember when the Queen passed away? and the entire Premier League round was cancelled and it had to be made up in pieces much later in the season. That also was a situation that was not very good. It's too full. We have too many competitions. I always say I think top leagues should be curbed to at most 18 teams, if not 16 to be honest. Tighten it up a little bit. Maybe use, to make it a little bit more exciting, a player format, although I really don't like it, like in Austria, but I gotta say it makes it a little bit more exciting. Make the cup competitions relatively uniform and have the dedicated slots for these and maybe keep a few midweek fixtures up. I know the Champions League, it's hard to make it smaller because we know that the Super League is coming around, not really improving on the situation. And please get rid of that Club World Cup. Those would be my minor suggestions just to improve the calendar a teeny little bit and please do not touch the international game this has to be done on the club level there we are way too saturated it's to the point where this midweek for instance i watched very very little because it's just too much hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye